Well, hello there. Hi, how are you? Oh, my voice cracked a little there. I am so excited to introduce to you the magic of color mixing. Now, this is a very intro level video for those of you who know nothing, absolutely nothing about color mixing. This is going to set you on the right path. Um, I would like to let you know that at the end of this video, you will become a magician, just so you know. Uh, color mixing and color theory is magic uh, in its most purest form, and I'm going to give you the secrets right now. So it's very exciting, uh, and I can't wait to kind of outline this for you. So a lot of you, I have no idea, I, I'm assuming a lot of you um, may prefer to buy uh, or think you might have to buy a whole palette of like 24 or 48 watercolors in order to paint. False. Incorrect. You can buy six, seven, seven paints maybe um, that could pretty much allow you to paint anything you wanted to paint. Um, so I highly recommend that after you watch this video, if you own no paints at all, or if you do own paints, to start concentrating on your specific primary colors and learning how to color mix. It will save you in the long run. That does not mean there aren't amazing paints out there with lots of virtues that you cannot mix any amount of primary colors together necessarily to get. They have different qualities from minerals and things that are added to them that give them an amazing quality. But I will say that learning to color mix, even the basics, if you know nothing about color mixing and you're just kind of stumbling through, um, just learning the basics will allow you to create more rich and um, beautiful paintings that have a lot more depth to them in their colors rather than just picking up the green, just picking up the purple or the oranges um, or the different even neutral tints from the tube. Okay, so I'll get off my soapbox now and I'll introduce you to color mixing. So let's start with our primary colors. And I'm gonna introduce you to your primary colors in case you don't know them. Not everybody does. Um, not everybody learned them in school. Um, your primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. So you can't generally mix any other colors together to get these colors. So these colors I am using, I will list them out here for you on the screen somewhere on here, but I chose to pick up an alizarin crimson for my first color wheel here. So we're gonna make a color wheel. So it's gonna be circular in shape. I hope I've left myself enough room. So I've chosen an alizarin crimson and I made this really wacky shape. Um, and I'm gonna be talking about warm colors and cool colors, but we're not even gonna get there yet. So primary colors first. Alizarin crimson, phthalo blue. So this is another very common color you will find in sets if you buy a watercolor set or certainly an open stock in almost every brand imaginable, they will have a phthalo blue. And I'm also going to go with a gamboge yellow. This is um, a pretty warm, extremely warm yellow. We'll get to it, I promise, when I talk about warm and cool, but you could also use a cadmium yellow in, this, in place of it, even though they look very different. So we have a gamboge yellow, phthalo blue, and alizarin crimson. These are three lovely colors. You're gonna find them in a lot of different sets if you buy sets. Um, I do highly recommend one set that is really great for color mixing is the Daniel Smith Essentials set. Comes with six tubes of paint and really has everything you need to get started. Um, if not, buying open stock paints. Uh, basically, you can get a tube of paint like this one um, right off the shelf or from behind the counter at your art store or online. You can buy them individually for a couple of dollars, anywhere from three to like eight dollars for a nice size tube, um, depending on the quality of the paint. And you can build just the palette that you need of the colors you need rather than getting a set with like four or five colors maybe you'll never touch um, or rarely use. All right, so I digress. Back to our primary colors. We have these lovely primary colors. And when we mix our primaries together, so if I mix red and blue, and I mix blue and yellow, and I mix red and yellow, 
together, we get our secondary colors. So let's do that together. So first, I'm gonna take my alizarin crimson and I'm gonna mix it with my phthalo blue. And I'm gonna do that over here on the palette. So when you mix red and blue together, you get purple. So some of you might be saying, Shana, that is not the bright, vibrant purple I thought you were going to get. I knew that blue and red together made purple, but I thought it would be brighter. How am I supposed to paint a beautiful purple iris with this very dull color? We will get to that. I know I'm going to say that a lot, but this has a reason and this purple color has a place in your palette. So stay with me here. So red and blue make purple. Blue and yellow make green. All right, so let me take some of that gamboge yellow. Whenever you're mixing into yellow, just be very careful with the other color. You don't need a lot of it to kind of go a long way in your yellow. It can overwhelm pretty quickly. So my phthalo blue and my gamboge yellow make another lovely color. With this lovely green down here. And again, this is a beautiful green color for foliage and landscapes, but maybe not as bright and vibrant as you may have expected it to be. All right, and lastly, let's put together our red and yellow. So we have our lizard and crimson. And I'm gonna add the gambo. I usually mix my color into yellows because again, yellow is the more delicate color and you'll need a lot more of it to, you'll need a lot more yellow to kind of overcome the other color. So now we have this beautiful orange. So let's talk about some interesting things about this particular color wheel that we have just painted. So I said I was going to talk about, I think I said I was going to talk about cools and warm colors. So the first thing you need to know is the two halves of the color wheel. Reds, yellows, and oranges are on the warm half and blues, greens, and purples are on the cool half. And you can see that um, you know, they, they feel cool to me and these feel warm to me, okay? So when I talk about a primary color, a red, a blue, or a yellow, having a cool quality or a warm quality, what that means is it's either leaning towards the other colors on the cool side or the warm side of the color wheel. So let me explain that with these colors. So alizarin crimson, this alizarin crimson is a cool red. It has some um, bluer undertones to it. It's a pretty neutral red of all the reds you could choose. So it's pretty well seated right in the center, but it does a tiny bit lean towards blue. So it's trying to travel this way on the color wheel. It's trying to go hang out with its neighbor blue. This blue does not want to hang out with red. This blue thinks red is the uncoolest color on the planet. And this blue, phthalo blue, has a lot of green and yellow undertones to it. So it has a lot of yellow undertones that give it a greenish quality, more of a turquoisey blue. It's very cool. So this blue is also trying to travel in this direction. It's running away from red. So it's not leaving behind enough of its blue qualities to make this a very bright and vibrant purple. And our yellow is also a very warm yellow and it is traveling in this direction. It's trying to go hang out with red. So they're all kind of chasing each other. This is like the worst um, love triangle I've seen. They're all trying to go hang out with the other neighbor. Um, so when, when that happens, this yellow and this blue don't necessarily want to hang out with each other. Yellow wants to go hang out with red and blue wants to hang out with yellow. So we're getting a nice green, but it's slightly desaturated. Okay. So stay with me here. So just remember this, all these neighbors want to hang out with their other neighbor. They're not giving you the brightest combination possible. So let's change it up a little bit and talk about some different, um, types of reds, blues, and yellows. So you could also 
have a very cool yellow. So this yellow is Hansa Yellow Light. Okay, so you can already see this and this yellow are very different. This is a much greener, cooler yellow. This is a much warmer yellow. All right, and let's pick a different blue. So I'm gonna pick a really warm blue. So this blue is warm, has a lot of red undertones to it. This is ultramarine or French ultramarine. And picking up a different red, oh, let's pick up Pyrrol Scarlet. So this is a very warm red. Okay, so I've done something here. I've put a couple of warm colors and a cool primary, and I did this on both of the color wheels. I didn't put all cool and all warm together. You certainly can, and it will change the quality of your secondary colors. So let's see what happens when we mix these colors together. So I have a red and it's warm. So which way is it going? It's going towards yellow. And I have a yellow that is cool. And which way is it going? It's going towards blue. And I have a blue that is warm. Which way is it going? It's going towards red. So the direction of this color wheel is heading in the complete opposite direction of the first one we did. Okay, so we're gonna get a lot of the same results overall in terms of how the colors mix, but there'll be some differences. So let's check out what happens. So my yellow wants to hang out with blue and my blue wants nothing to do with that yellow. So let's see what kind of green we get. So yellow and blue make green, but what kind of green will this yellow and blue make? All right, so we have another slightly desaturated. It's got a different quality to it. It's a little grayer, a little warmer, or a little um, kind of grayer on the blue side. I would say it's even a cooler version than this. But similar kind of quality to them. They're both slightly desaturated, toned down versions of green. All right, so this blue wants to go hang out with this red. I have a feeling they are not going to get along because this red wants to go hang out with yellow. So let's take our French ultramarine or ultramarine and a little bit of pyrrole scarlet and let's see what kind of purple we get. Mm. Again, very similar, desaturated purple. They don't really want to hang out with each other. If I added even more red, you can get a more of a a reddish purple magenta almost brown looking and now red wants to hang out with yellow yellow wants to go hang out with blue they don't want to be together let's see what happens I feel like Bill Nye the science guy doing experiments come here hands the yellow light I need you okay and now I have to be very careful this cool and red All right, all right, not too bad, not too shabby. The orange holds up pretty well in both of these scenarios. This one's a little bit lighter. It really depends on how much of that red I put in there. There we go. So we have a pretty nice quality orange here, not too desaturated, but not the brightest it could be. So we get very similar results when mixing these colors in this fashion. Now let let the magic begin, okay? So we know what to expect now. When all the colors are kind of moving in the same direction, our secondary colors are gonna be slightly desaturated. They're still gonna have the quality of the color we want, but they're not going to be as bright or vibrant as they possibly could be. And they're not gonna be completely desaturated either. So now let's start mixing and matching and just make the whole party a mess. Um, so, Let's take our phthalo blue. Let me turn my palette around here. I got a lot going on. And I'm gonna take my rag and just wipe off some space. There we go. All right, so let's take our phthalo blue. Now phthalo blue has 
wants nothing more than to hang out with a yellow that also wants to hang out with blue. So let's take that Hansa yellow light that also wants to hang out with blue, it wants to be more blue, and let's mix them together and see what we get. So here we are with this beautiful, beautiful Kelly green, bright green. This is more of the green you would expect when mixing these two color, when you know, you're mixing blue and yellow together and the traditional like, oh, I want to make a bright saturated green. Well, there you are. You have to pick the blue that wants to be yellow and the yellow that wants to be blue and they make this beautiful saturated version together. All right, let's try it one more time with another color. Um, let's do a purple. So we need a red that wants to be blue and a blue that wants to be red. So if we take alizarin crimson, and this effect is even more um, vibrant when you use a color like a quinacridone magenta, which is a very cool red color, magenta color. So, um, but we're using alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue. So ultramarine wants to be red, alizarin crimson wants to be more blue. We're gonna get pretty bright and vibrant purple. Look at that, beautiful. And then last but not least, let's take our Pyrrol Scarlet and our Gamboge Yellow. Now those two both definitely wanna be orange. And our oranges held up pretty well. They didn't get too desaturated with these combinations. But if you throw them together, I mean, oofa, look at that orange. That is like bright, bright orange. That is traffic cone orange. So we have our most vibrant colors, our most saturated vibrant colors come from a combination of primaries that want to be together. So our last little experiment before I get into complementaries, um, what happens when both colors do not want to be with each other? Let's see, let's just do one. Um, Let's do Pyrrol Scarlet. So that Pyrrol does not want to be purple or blue or anything on the cool side. Pyrrol Scarlet and we'll do Phthalo Blue. So Phthalo Blue wants nothing to do with the warm side and Pyrrol Scarlet wants nothing to do with the cool side. And when we mix them, what do we get? Oh, that's, you know, lovely. This is, you know, it's hard to even see this. This is the purple you get, which is almost like a, a gray. It's almost completely neutralized. So because these had so much of the opposite colors, they were going away from each other on the color wheel, they've neutralized each other completely to make an almost gray color. So let's talk about complementaries really quick. If you learn nothing else and you have a bunch of convenience colors, knowing your complementary colors will help you really work those colors to your benefit. So complementary colors are colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. So blue and orange are a combination, red and green and yellow and purple. When you add them to each other, they start to neutralize each other. They start to, the purple, if you start adding a little bit of purple to your yellow, it starts to pull it towards itself on the color wheel until you get to the center here. And in the center is completely neutral. It's a gray, um, brown gray neutral color, similar to what we got here. So let's take um, this bright vibrant purple. So we're gonna use purple and then I'm gonna start to add yellow to it and see what happens. I'm just gonna lighten it up a little with water so you can actually see kind of the value or see the color. So let's start to add yellow. And what happens? We get neutral. So this had a lot of strong yellow in it, so it actually made it like a brownish color. If I went back 
and added a little bit more blue and a little bit more red, just a touch, a little bit more blue. It would start to neutralize it even more to a gray. So this is a warmer one, this is a cooler gray. So you can see that with just your, comp your primary colors, you can make all kinds of neutrals. And with water, you can lighten them to things like skin tones or um, brown bark or all different kinds of things where you might need a neutral color. Um, you don't have to buy a million types of paint. You can do so much with so little. So I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and I hope that you can take this with you whether you are brand new and knew nothing about color mixing or maybe knew a little bit at least how to make your primaries and secondaries but didn't understand the different qualities of your primary colors whether they were warm or cool and this has helped you really understand that um, i hope you can now use your newfound wizardry um, to your benefit you're welcome for the magic lesson um, and Lastly, just to recap kind of what we did and what we went over and how to tell. So you might ask me, well, Shana, how do I tell when I'm buying a color if it's cool or if it's warm? And sometimes it's obvious. You can just look at it and say, does this, you know, if, if I put this next to blue, does it look like it's trying to kind of go be that color a little bit more than the other way? And sometimes you just have to Google it. You have to Google alizarin crimson, warm or cool, uh, pyrrole scarlet, warm or cool. Um, but that's okay. Sometimes your brain and your uh, eyeballs don't wanna work together and it's really hard to remember which ones are cool and which ones are warm. So it's totally fine to Google it. I am often in a store Googling things on my phone. Um, so, but warm and cool, um, Primary colors. So our primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. Each of those primaries can have a cool quality or a warm quality to them. And depending on how we mix them together, the cools and the warms um, will change the type of secondary color we get, either a desaturated secondary color or very bright and vibrant um, secondary color or something in between. Um, always remember that you can mix complementary colors together to start to neutralize them. If you get a huge pack of paint and you have, you know, just two different greens in it and they're not the type of greens you want and you want a more desaturated green, just take a little red and add a little red to it and start to experiment with your paints, the different types of colors that you can get um, by just adding complementary colors together. So thank you so much. As always, I always enjoy painting with you and bestowing upon you these magic um, lessons that I have learned throughout the years that just fascinate me every time. There is an art and there's also a science to it and then some of it actually is magic. So don't tell anybody I told you, but you're welcome. Um, your uh, letter to Hogwarts will be in the mail shortly. Okay, everyone, thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day and happy color mixing.